Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the one, the only, the Azith, and I am here with more Lord on the Format today, sent in to us by who else other than Yusuf. Yes, that's right. If you would like to go ahead and participate or contribute to this, please go play a game of Lord on the Format with Kalimdor the Aftermath, Lord on the Aftermath, Azeroth Wars, Siege of Quel'Thalas, any of those are I know pretty decently, and can shoutcast, and then you can send them to... Azathancasts at gmail.com I'm going to edit that up on screen Azathancasts at gmail.com I will be happy to shoutcast And you can join us live on Twitch 9 to 3 every day uh, West Coast time So let's go ahead and get started After that little bit of a plug Hello and welcome Ladies and gentlemen This is Loader on the Format And today's players are going to be The Runt controlling Dragon Maw Alder controlling Loderon Zyphros controlling Silverhand That player in the Grey Trunks Controlling Cult of the Damned Sophie Pink He's actually green He's going to be the Ranger Core Witch King is also green, he's going to be the Shadow Council. The Avatar in the orange trunks will be controlling the Dark Horde. Terranus Metathil, yellow, dwarves, U Lord Uther, purple, Dalaran, Kill Serdan, teal, Burning Legion. Lich King, oh shit, oh sorry, Lich King, blue, the Lich King, that's fucking awesome. And uh, Yusuf in the yellow trunks controlling Highborn. So let's go ahead and jump in here. <clears throat> It's the Lich King, right? Everyone's like, oh god, I know him. That guy's terrifying. Oh no, is he a real role player? He's a hardcore role player? That can get iffy. I put in both of my headphones. Or should I use the cool ones that are like, they don't? I don't know what the benefit is, but we're gonna use them. Because they're orange. Uh-huh. For those of you on the VOD, I apologize. For those of you here, um, they're orange and they go with my head, so bite me. Okay. <clears throat> now, back to the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, starting off this Lord on the format, we are going to, of course, see aggression in all of the usual areas. Uh, not, I, I know, you're probably all thinking, what? What the, what in the fresh hot hell's going on here? Lur, sir, I paid for a much closer view. And uh, you will get that closer view. We will be doing less cinematic panning of the camera in this and more informative. Uh, decent stuff only getting in close if we really need to get on the nitty gritties of battle or show how somebody got caught on something, decent surrounds, or really, let's be honest, cinematic effects because I lie. We're probably going to keep doing that. <sighs> Unlocking the Fog of War, we're going to see that uh, Witch King has used his Shadow Council He's not corrupting Osha Gun. He is leaving Grandmaster Vorpal there, so I think he will use the ability here in just a second. He can use Vorpal to corrupt Osha Gun into a base, and then after that, a Dark Naru as well. Now, whoa, what is going on here? That player, extremely aggressive, having spawned in the Noxious Glade, or rather, uh, Death Knell. He's going to be putting some pressure on the west side of the Alliance. Now, that's not that big of a deal. Kind of curious as to what casters he's going to upgrade first. Necromancer's clearly, so he's going to have a heavy, undead, uh, cripple, unholy frenzy army. He It's extremely mana intensive, and there's very little healing, but a ton of summoning. So we can already see cripples on him, unholy frenzies, uh, effects going down already. I just said we're not going to do it, but here we are, aren't we? Dark Green's going to slowly lose this fight, and I think that that... Play Cloud means that he's also fully upgraded his Dalaran Exiles at only minute 4. He is sporting some casters to be truly afraid of right now, able to summon Skeletal Archers in addition to the Skeletal Warriors on the front line. And okay, Dark Green's under some pressure, that's alright. Lordaeron, he's gonna stabilize, I'm sure, no doubt. Uh, slightly more important though is this first little bit of Zephyra Froze. He's going to try to put up a little bit of fight here near his Mana Forge Charge Crystals. Uh, fend off the Legion and the Dark Horde for a little bit, try to give his Draenei units more time to build up and eventually teleport out. Now there's a few strategies in the beginning for the Draenei. One of them is to use a caster to lay this weird ward on the ground. It's basically an explosive ward and you lay them in, you know, typical mind trap fashion all the way back to your goddamn base and they either have to spend a lot of time slowly quote-unquote scanning for your minds. Oh Jesus, spacebar, stop touching that. Or confirm that it's, okay. The next push is we're going to see... The Draenei are going to slow down. I only saw Dark Green, uh, Dark Horde there, and that means that he's not going to have enough forces to actually press the Draenei yet. That player was clearly bunched around the Mana Crystals and knew what he was doing, was defending in stages. So that tells me 
<clears throat> I'm I'm Griff now. Oh, someone say I uh, I'm definitely Griff. I'm not Church. Although the older, I, the younger I was, the more Griff I was. The older I get, the more Church I get for sure. Now. Alder doesn't have support coming from his men. Let's go ahead and check around his lands right now. I know flying about is interesting. Northern Lordaeron, not under a lot of pressure as of yet, mostly peaceful. And what confuses me is the fact that we're seeing no light blue forces. Let's go ahead and spam out right now. Oh, there's a lot of... Ah, what is this? The Dragon Maw has gone for an extremely early attack on Menethil Harbor. And if the dwarves and dark green... Yeah, used to saying nobody cares about that base. They will chase them off into the wetlands. Um, Dark Horde... No, I don't see the Dragon Maw turning around to fight this. Not right now, and certainly not in rage at this cannon that's not been taken out yet. Never forget about the Dwarven Siege Cannon sitting at Baildun Fortress. That thing will... Yeah, well, I mean, you had a catapult. You don't anymore. Thanks to the cannon. Dark Green getting a few of his units caught out of place, and Garethos by wisely pissing off. Running back to the bridge as of right now. Um, Yusuf the dwarves. There's going to be a small clash here. Let's. See. Uh, Dark Horde immediately runs away. Yusuf has one one upgrades. Wow! Look at his ranged everything impact. Uh, only the melee missing any kind of attack upgrade and Dark uh, Dragon Ball Clan on their heels. Let's see if he has been taking advantage of the. Yes, he has a town hall already mining, and I think Yusuf has. <gasps> He's got his dwarves over here ready to mine from the second one, and I gotta give him credit so far. Little Yusuf's playing dwarves pretty well. I do like that goal. I like. I don't mind races that are high um, micro or macro. Sorry, I'm missing this massive occurrence right now going on in the Dread Eye. We're gonna zoom in for a slightly better view. <clears throat> Battle line's been drawn. Kurenai scouts, Arborite warriors lined up back here. One attack on his ranged. Nothing. F oh, one one for his melee. All right, this is gonna hold pretty well. If they can take out this infernal, that'll get rid of a lot of immolation damage. You don't really realize how much it's doing. Warlocks from the Witch King. Hmm. So our Shadow Council player is going to be going heavily into his warlock summons and casters. I I like to go Death Knights, but that's totally because I'm a, a hero group whore. People who are good at RTSs will probably want to do the warlock Necrolite combo, which ends up with tons and tons of skeletons and tons and tons of meat on the front line, and just, it's very valuable. So, go ahead and let the fight continue to play out. Witch King with one attack upgrade on his Nether Dragons, piercing magic. That's where all of Green's attack is. Some backup from Teal and Orange means that Light Blue. Oh, look at the spells, though. You can, the tail is told in health bars, as always in this game. The tail is told in health bars. Now, Light Blue is going to start losing on the front line, but he still has a number of Kurnite Anchorite Warriors, which have, let's not forget, nearly 3,000 health each. Yes, it's scary, but these Exodari are smashing through them right now, and Maru has, still on half mana, plenty of spells left, and can retreat pretty soon. I think this is a wonderful feed for our Light Blue player, if I'm being true. Vindicator Maraud's going to level up enormously during this combat. Julian Reno saying he has two weeks. At, wait, what the fuck? Oh, Yusuf, you're not dwarves. Terran's Menethil's uh, fucking kicking ass, and Yusuf sucks balls. That's what I meant to tell you, is Yusuf sucks balls. Uh, finally having broken through the line, now you can see the true power. Terran Gore Fiend, AoE healing everything that's glowing green that you can see right there. That's everything that is green is his land. And they murder, murder the Drenai Warriors. Look at this poor guy, he's like, I just... Oh god, did an undead appear literally inside betwixt my clenched butt cheeks? I think it did. Oh. Alright, let's get away from all this betwixting and beclenching and see what's going on up north because the undead are still putting up a big fight. Hey, hey look at that. Professor Putricide summoned by our blue pay player. That is an ability that he has on the Frozen Throne. Costs a bit of money, but it sends a little batch of support units here to help out Grey. And believe me, Grey really needs it. This is one of the better choke points in the game as the two long bits of uh, mountain basically make it impossible to get a decent concave attacking or getting out, really. So you have to kill them in here and then get out. Um, or they can just keep you in here forever. However, that doesn't that doesn't uh, benefit the alliance early on. Alder zero into his upgrades. Plenty of knights on the front line, and it looks like Yusuf's going to be back here. At Alder as well. Yusuf has a number of magistrix. I know they have chain heal. This isn't looking good. The swordsman and the highborn are also going to have to fend. 
Oh, whoa, some serious AoE going down right now, and I think we have to contribute to that. Yusuf, uh, mind giving me a do it that came down there? A number of courses dropped to the down the ground, which tells me dispels probably most likely killed a number of skeletons and summons. And yep, yep, we're seeing dispels regularly come out from the human side. Purple's joined in to fill in the gap of the dead, dead, dark green, but Lord Garethos, Uthmar, inhuman beasts, he may be an asshole, but he's a brave asshole. You know what I mean. And uh, I, I view Lord Garethos much like I view. Uh, who am I thinking of from Game of Thrones right now? Our warriors have engaged the enemy. Lord. It's the asshole on the wall who hates John, and he's a ranger. And John gets picked. Oh, Alistair Thorne? It's Alistair Thorne. Alistair Thorne is the name. Don't have chain heals. They have giant dispels and mana drain. Never mind. They have giant dispels and mana drain. No need to spam army early game. Get your special upgrades, rather, says Julian Reno. Hero squad is enough, and you lost Lorthamar. People are already shitting on uh, Yusuf, however. I want to point out that his sorceresses and everything are the only things still left on this battlefield right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at as this fight continues on. Dollar on Exiles, rank 2, master, everything's master. Professor Putricide may go down, and this is going to start to grind. Oh, I was going to say it was going to start to grind, but these knights. <laughs> that, uh, that hero aim, hell yeah. Dark Green knows what he's doing. He's taking out the important stuff early on. He's not just going to grind against these undead summons. No, he wants your heroes. He wants your heart. He wants your life. And he's going to get it in the form of the big... I also, again, I just want to say Professor Putricide is one of the best custom hero models I've ever seen using the Goblin Alchemist to make uh, an acolyte riding on an abomination. So cool. So cool. An allied so champion fucking fallen. cool. Oh my god, I'm sorry. A Dragon Maw in the meantime in a terrible state of distress. Worse than I thought. It's worse than I thought, guys. He doesn't have he doesn't have his catapult. He has no catapult up there. Holy god. Julian! Source Cockery! We're pretty fucked, dude! This is actually really bad right now. Oh god, you can see all of the siege from the dwarves right now. Splashing down, and he clearly has the scattered rounds upgrades that's increasing the damage down to unarmored and medium armored units. You can see in the form of the little sparkles that occur, little yellow ones on the back line. And uh, Skybreaker picking up. Oh my. What the fuck? This is the most terrible. It's a giant flying ship made of metal and explosives carrying angry guys on bears. I give up. I give up. Alright, so, uh, the Horde has suffered two terrible losses with the Dragon Ball going down and the uh, Colt getting just immediately evicted. There's no question. Yeah, this is the Lord on the... Oh, people are talking about something else. Sorry, Julian Reno, Yusuf, you guys continue on. We are doing this. Now, the Kirin Tor, Dalaran is teleported down south to the Dunalgaz station. Or, not even teleported, I think. He just fucking ran there. Because I'm not seeing any of his Kirin Tor operatives, or... Yeah, that's weird. Tears fall agents. King Magni has united the southern clans. Clan Thundermar and Firebeard join the claws. What? That's a th Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting. Thundermar. After you defeat the Dragomai, you can go up here to Thundermar and claim a number of units and a demi as well. Where is he? Keegan Firebeard, adding him to your group is pretty nice. He has a few unique abilities. I unfortunately cannot list them off right now. But he's a pretty good addition to your little hero squad. Check him out. <clears throat> Look at this. We have people in chat who have literally forgotten what games they played of Lord on the format. This game will suck up your life. Dark Green, no longer concerned about what was going on here. Uh, uh, no longer concerned with the Gold of the Dam, is freed up to go ahead and head down south. He's going to pass Ander Hall right now, and ooh, Yusuf is teleporting somewhere. Probably south. Holy crap! Yeah, he's going to try to defend Farstrider Lodge, but that's going to go down. Health bars are telling a terrible story for the Dark Horde and the Horde right now, as the Alliance completely masked up and in their element... Okay, that's not the fight we need to be looking at, okay? It's okay, it's okay. Don't worry about it. The dwarves with eight control points. You can see the control points on the right side. Remember, the dwarves have a few, a little bit more gold than you think because of uh, mining operation. Oh my god, this is a nightmare for the demons right now. A number of dispels going down and stuns as well. That was 
The Skybreaker casting an AoE stun. I th Although that one is forever. What the hell hit them? That stun lasted way too long, whatever it was. That had better have been a one-time only kind of used thing. Demons are now retreating back down to Kargath. The Horde in tatters. The Lich King unprepared and the Cult of the Dam no longer established in Lordaeron. I don't know where you head from here. However, he's claimed Noxorabus. The undead has brought Kel'Thuzad back to the frozen waste of Northrend, hemp into the mountains, broken Noxorabus from its frozen roots, and uh, he's also chosen Stonethmine, so he's gotten all three of his monster pieces as well. You're like, what are monster pieces? Why did he have to choose this thing at the beginning? Every race has so many weird, different, little, unique things in this game, and it's not just gameplay, it's management-wise, and I think that was smart, because you can only make so many different moves. Like, when I see another barrage move, it's like, oh, cool, he's doing... He's doing Rexar's charge thing. He's doing the Beastmaster thing, but it's just a different model. Always cool. Eventually runs out of steam. And the demons, however, do not run out of steam, deciding to fight just outside Kargath. The Dark Horde reinforcing Terranus Menethil. Uh, Sophie and... Actually, Yusuf, the entire alliance right now. Lord Uther streaming in as well. And this is one of the biggest fights I've ever seen. The Horde and the Alliance are ha duking it out. Alright, yeah, let's go ahead and check out upgrades right now. Um, I want to say that the Horde has a much better position, although I want to point out, nice silence is going down on the biggest chunk of green units. That was a Sylvanas move, so Sophie is using extreme micro. He's paying attention to where he's really needed on this fight. Nothing could have been more effective than that exact small group getting silenced. Uh, it's hard to point out things of excellence in maps like this because you can eventually learn what you're looking for. For example, you uh, take off your health bars. You, if you have them always on, you press alt to take them off and you can see, oh look, there's a custom model, Magni. You learn to spot him. I'm going to go ahead and AOE him. The demons are starting to take their toll not only because of a slightly better concave but the fact that they're reinforcing closer to home. They have slightly more siege units overall, and no matter how many Xylas Sylvanas throws out, can't shut down all of these casters, and the Felsworn are already getting pretty high. Look at me, Suicide Anastarian. Were you attempting to do that is the question, Yusuf. Oh, yep. Whoa, what are you doing? Anastarian is balls deep in the army, and we all glitch to death with him. And with that, the demon army suddenly in a position of strength will be pushing the alliance away. Let's go ahead and speed it up, guys. You're going to have to retreat all the way back to Dunalgaz Station. Not Dunalgaz Station. Yay, Dunalgaz. I actually got it right the second time. I hear uh, the sound of archers over here. What's going on? Oh, okay. It's just, it's just the Dark Horde trying to recover and become the Dragonmaw Clan. Or the Dragonmaw Clan becoming the Black Dragon Flight. Hermaderp. Derp to derp. <gasps> a nice use of the Skybreaker to pick up Magni Bronzebeard and a number of Wild Hammer Clan shamans. No need to lose them. And the Blood Elves now come out. With Anisarian Sunstrider's death, our Blood Elven player or our High Elven player had the options to become the Blood Elves. Or. I, I don't know if it's an option or like it's a thing you do. Hmm. I don't know if it's money or a thing you do, but it is 100%. Absolutely a fun idea, because you get Kael'thas, who immediately starts out at the town portal in a big group of units, who can teleport into the fight and start contributing, and see, people will get upset, and they'll be like, hmm, I your bench, but that's what happened, like, Kael'thas, all these people came out of the woodwork when shit went down, and it is, I, I don't know. I'm not, I don't hate events like the Azathin you will see in videos four or five years ago where I'm like, Hadroth Ward is a true archie action. Lord Rob the format and all these maps are just the bullshit. Ooh, look how, the, look how my opinion has changed. We're going to go ahead and take a peek down south because it says we're under attack. But I don't see any reason for the Horde to be attacking itself yet. Well, if you don't, Scourge will just rush capital. I don't know, I think the upgrades that... Alright, Yusuf's talking to someone privately. <gasps> He's making plans with the Avatar to become Iladari and go super cool evil stuff. So he's planning a betrayal with the Dark Horde right now. Now, that would be calamitous in the moment. But if they push the Alliance back, then the Scourge Civil War happens, and then we have that happen? That would be awesome. Oh, that would change the game entirely. <laughs> Alter says I have three. Lordaeron, you have a lot more income than that. You're doing fine. 
three income. Six control points. Get out of here. That's average. When players... Are, oh, okay. So the runt was trying to reestablish the Black Dragonflight here at his old base, Dragon Ball Port. But that, yeah, that's not happening a lot. The Alliance chase him out one more time. The Legion and Dark Horde still sit here just outside of Kargath, along with the Shadow Council. Not moving. And the Illidarius happen. Major event. In their desperate... Isn't their desperate search for magical power, the Blood Elves have aligned themselves with the Naga and Warchief Kargath of the Fellhorde. A new power rises in Outland, led by Lord Elid and Stormrage. The Iladari have defeated Magtheridon. He has been locked within Hellfire Citadel and drained for his fell blood. The Pit Lord's demon blood will feed the Fellhorde and allow the creation of new demon hunters. The Fellhorde's Outland has joined with the Iladari. So does that mean... Hold on. Is he unallied with all the demons and shit? Oh my god, he is! He's just become this rogue fucking faction! Are you insane? Dar uh, Orange now has control of Eladin, Verdus Felsol, and Kargath Bladefist. So he has an Orc, a Blood Elf, and a Night Elf Demon Hunter. I am afraid I do not know their abilities, guys. I can assume that Eladin's going to have an Evasion, an Immolation, a Mana Burn, and probably a Metamorphosis, but Eladin's changed. But at only level 6 and 2600 health, those abilities will be very pivotal to changing the battles. Uh, that also means that the Blood Elves are unallied from his allies in the north as well. This is this has hurt both teams, so I feel like it's more fair than anything else. Light Bloom moves up to try to do a little bit of damage. Sophie's going to control a number of... Yeah, no, no, never mind. They're going to have to do some damage. Damage control up top. And the Dwarves are moving down south to potentially flank? Oh, Kargath goes down, but that's fine. I would agree that taking Outland is 100% the most important thing. Get it out of the demon's hands and establish yourself a closed off base of operations for everything else, because otherwise you're screwed. Okay, uh, Julian Reno, if you can tell me the spells, that'd be great in the chat. That way I can accurately give an idea of uh, what I think's going on. It's hard. So many heroes, so many abilities. <gasps> okay, I got really worried there for a second. The Witch King is trying to attack Black Temple right now, however... <laughs> the Avatar knows that. The Avatar is bringing units, and while the Avatar is extremely powerful and has a number of summons, these Infernals are going to do a lot of work. 3,300 health each, four of them dropped, and now... Oh, I'm sorry, that's Blood Elf teleporting in. I thought that was going to be the Avatar, but I bet he's going to take the run through the Dark Portal up north and then head all the way down south to Black Temple. The Witch King... Ah, driven back. Nice. No silences, I think, but uh, the ability to take control of enemy units in the form of spellbreakers may be useful if they can get their mana high enough to snatch things like demons. Yeah, it hurt evil more because they were already losing. That's alright. This makes me want to try playing the Fell Horde with somebody after this. Like, I mean, I'm not going to totally plan on betraying my allies, but who knows? Things can happen. Live cast after this. I'm just saying. things. Can... See, this is why we need to watch replays first and then do live cast so we can get ideas and see all kinds of crazy shit go down. Then when we play, we don't feel like we're idiots. We feel like we're just being normal. I want to point out that Silverhand will crush the Blood Elves up north. Two Alliance factions now forced to go up north. So, I mean, overall, that's three Alliance factions off the table attacking the Horde for the cost of one of their own. Now, admittedly, uh, Green is back here trying to fight them, so it's two of their own. Oh, no! Remember how I told you that the Blood Elves were going to be keep pushing the Witch King back and that the Dark Horde was going to take the run from up north, go through the Dark Tortle, and then flank? Yeah, that's exactly what's happening right now. We're seeing these forces flank. Oh, and silences do go out. I don't know who had that ability, but my guess is it's one of the demon hunters here. Yeah, could be the... Oh, what a cool little model. Let's go ahead and zoom in real quick just to appreciate. Very cool models. Ew, what is that? That is Abyssal Infernal. That thing is a nightmare. <laughs> no idea what spell. He's like, yeah, quite a lot of spell reworks. But I have no idea what they were. Uh, demons and Green are here, by the way. So this is crushing for everybody. And unfortunately, this is hurting evil more because they are here fighting evil now. 
Yes, it took two Alliance players to go up here and kill off the Blood Elves, but they're not losing anything. They're not losing anything. The balance of forces is not equal right now, is what I'm saying. And uh, Blood Elves and Dark Horde continue to fly on. Warlocks and Demons retreating now, finally, into the Shadow Labyrinth. It's not quite as labyrinthine as you might expect, but it is powerful. The Akundun Soul Cairn. It's a nice little base, it's a nice little mini non-mobile Noxoramus, but it's nothing to write home about. And alright, Dwarves now fight, taking down Blackrock Spire. That's a small loss for the Fell Horde, who only has two control... Jesus, two control points. The Alliance is going to have to have something done to them here pretty soon. Otherwise... I mean, Yusuf did send this in, so this tells me that there's not going to be total... <gasps> Demon Hunter has a... Oh, uh, what? It has a metamorphosis mode? That makes them even sicker. That's cool. I love that individually they're going to have those. Fathom Lord Kaeltris, stop it. Stop looking so cool. What an awesome custom skin that is, though. Can we just, for a moment... Oh, it's beautiful! I am in love with this model right now. Snap straight from WoW would be my guess, but that's just awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna stop jizzing my pants over that. We're gonna get through the last bit of this first part, and we can hop into part two afterwards. Oh, looks like we've got a list of abilities here for Elidin listed off by Julian Reno in the chat. It says Q is Gifts of Sargeras, restores hit points and mana nearby allies, gives them a temporary armor increase. W is Abyssal Infernal, replaces evasion. Okay, nice. And, oh, there's a big fight going on right now, and we're got. yep. It will result in the Shadow Council's losses because the Abyssal Infernal being in the back lines right now, and the sil Who's fucking throwing out that silence? Oh no, blinded? Oh, it's been blinded, not silence. Blinding light. It cannot attack. It can still cast spells, but cannot attack. Now, yes, uh, dangerous things in the form of the Fell Keepers. They do a lot of AoE damage, and if he's not careful, you can see the, the core of that army getting chunked with every attack from the Fell Keepers. They have to break through and get out into the open area of Green's base. Or Terran Gorfine can turn on his healing ward. Aura, and everything will be fine. There he is. Good old Terran Gorfine in the green cape. Running around like a badass, saving everybody's lives. Uh, however, again, the back part of that army there, still very much in danger from this Fellkeeper. Both Fellkeepers, I think, right? There's two? One of my bananas. Oh. Green's gotta be so mad right now. If he could get off a stun or anything, some kind of a silence even, on Terran, this army would be dead already, but it's that slow AoE healing that's even keeping it on the brink of health, and it's gonna die here soon. I think the Blood Elves and Dark Horde are gonna get driven back here in a moment. Green, a convincing hold. Uh, along with Tychondrius and Teal's help, of course, let's not forget that. But they're gonna have to retreat. This is weird. This is terrifying for the Blood Elves. Fellkeepers are destroying you. I think they're attacking the Fellkeeper finally, or they destroyed it. Okay, it's finally destroyed, but Lady Vosh is dead as shit. He identified the problem, but not before it was already a problem. <laughs> he just says, I hate those, this base. Every deep base like this, important base, should have some kind of high defensive ability like that, I'm just saying. Uh, in the meantime, I actually don't... Aw, oh, shit. The Alliance is already in Hellfire Citadel. This is not going well for anybody. Couple of Lions players. There's still 45, 50 minutes left in this match, so. Yusuf's gotta regroup, Dark Horde's gotta regroup, everyone's gonna have to retreat right now. Just momentarily. Demon Hunters and Heroes are gonna re Don't for the Dark Horde. Ah, uh, yeah, get the hell out of the Alliance's way. It's a very good idea. Let them finish the Shadow Labyrinth and retreat to your north and south bases and then squish them between your armies eventually in a terribly evilish way. At least that's what I'd do. <laughs> is Gandalf somewhere on the front line? Right. Oh, we were watching Lord of the Rings last night. But the old 1976 version, the animated one, where Aragorn, as my roommate puts it, looks like he's Native American for some reason. It's true. What the fuck is the Lich King doing? We are 27 minutes into the game, and I'm not sure the plague has been launched. I'm not sure Blue's done anything. 
He's sitting in Northwood, 744 fucking gold doing dick all, just playing with his cock. Sorry, I'm very mad at him right now. Even, look, Gray's bored. He's like, I'm gonna go destroy Boralus, I guess. I'll, I'll go expand and be cool and do stuff, and you can just suck a cack. <sighs> Again, uh, I want to point out, very beautiful artwork here. This dock is one of the neatest things that's ever been made in a custom map. Looks like it belongs in the campaign. Shout out to my boys, Marshmallow, Savinimus. Uh, in the south, the alliance. Yeah, I already foresaw that the Blood Elves and the Dark Horde are going to try to play a little game of keep away with the alliance. Because now everyone's out here. There's three factions in Outlands, two factions up north. They have to worry about the Lich King and the Burning Legion. Um, maybe... <laughs> maybe we'll see Dark Green betray or something. That would make the game a little bit more fair. Yeah, they both have... The Illidari and the Felhorde have terribly weak gold. Four control points between them. Between them. Yusuf with a sizable force and... Orange with the very strong heroes. Udgard keeps been added. <gasps> what? I'm assuming that's another blue thing that you can get. That's really cool, though. Positioned a little weirdly and wrong. Whatever. The Avatar. Come on, I'm expecting some kind of a fight. The plague has been launched. Blue has landed. Force is finally all up in the shit. Call here. Blue, where are your heroes? Where's the new Barak? All right, Blue, you're doing fairly well. Now let's watch as Dark Green's forces get into position. A number of steam tanks, mostly melee upgrades right now. No ranged combat attack upgrades and no melee attack upgrades. So purely defensive build right now from our player Alder. And as soon as he gets flanked by the cult forces, he's going to need to retreat into the capital city. That is, if the cult forces don't like block him in with a number of weird... He could just drop all the plague cauldrons. And... However, I w he's doing great. He's doing great so far. Um, does need to retreat. Reinforcements alone are not going to carry this fight, buddy. Alder, retreat. Alder, get the hell out of dodge. Again, once again, doing fine. Because he wants it all. And I've been doing just fine. Gonna, gonna be that because I want it all. Started out with a kiss, how did it end up like this? Arthas is gonna die, actually. I'm not gonna sing anymore. If Arthas doesn't retreat, he's gonna die terribly. This he needed to get in the- get in the fucking gate! I don't know why he's hanging outside the gate as this concave continues to pile in. The minute that Oh Grey caves in and makes this unaccessible to Dark Green is the minute the capital city is officially lost. Now, I don't know if Alder wants that to happen or not, but it is what's going to happen now. Because holy gods! Alder's forces have turned into nothing more than a swarm of zombies. Oh, there are the Plague Cauldron zombies I was expecting. Yep. So, Grey now has the ability to summon all three of his casters. And absolutely swamp every battlefield with limitless numbers. It got like 1,200 health on a summon zombie and there's four of them. Each cauldron is 4,000 hit points of you that's coming at you. More than. More than four. Uh, I think the Alliance took a peek into Outland and went, we don't know what the fuck's, like, the political situation is here right now, so we don't want to deal with it. So we'll pause right here with Capital City on the brink of death, and just look at the number of zombies, guys. This is obscene. It's just a zombie jamboree leading outside of the Capital City. They're going to go in here, they're going to murder Ternus Menethil, and I don't think there's any chance Stonespire may chase down, oh, fuck, guys. I'm just calling it. If Stonespire keeps chasing down Arthur's Menethil, he has a mana draining attack, if you're smart. He has a targeted attack. He has summons that can keep up with you. This could be very bad. I think we'll watch Arthas die in the next episode. Thank you for joining me. This has been the one, the only, the Azathen. Please check out Lord on the Format. Uh, host a game. Play it. Send me a replay. Check out brigandshaven.net if you want to learn more about the map and the players who play it. And until next time, guys, give me a like, comment, subscribe. It helps out. Bye!